What is up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Sweat the Bet podcast brought to you by Odds Jam. Oddsjam.com is a sports better's best friend. They are the sponsors of this podcast. So please go check out Odds Jam. They have awesome, awesome tools that are easy to use to kind of give you the edge as a sports better against the sports books. Positive EV betting, guys, arbitrage alerts, easy bet tracking. We have an Odds Jam player prop app. If you don't want to even go on the website and use the main software, the Odds Jam player prop app on the iOS store for absolutely free. So go check out our sponsors, Odds Jam. I am one of the co hosts, Andrew Kim, aka the Parlay Doc. Here's my co host, Matt Modi. What is up, Matt? How are you doing, man? I'm good. I'm good. I had a soccer game tonight. We got the win. So I'm just coming full of positive energy. Nice man, got the dub, got the dub. So, what is this soccer thing? Where where do you guys play at? What is this? Um, so I joined a team that two people I knew, a league that two people I knew were already on. It's some it's some indoor league. Um, I haven't played indoor in, in a long time, like pretty much since high school. But it's a way to way to meet people. I played soccer in high school. I I know it's my cousin and one of my good friends from high school on the league. So they're able to get me in. We uh yeah we got the win today. I I can't say that I had that much to do with the victory, but. We still got it. So that's all that matters. <laughs> Sounds good, man. Sounds good. So guys, so today in our, our current episode of Sweat the Bet, what we're going to cover today, we did a previous episode. So if you haven't looked at it yet, we did a previous episode outlining all of our AFC divisional predictions. Today, we're going to be covering the ugly, ugly <laughs> NFC. Uh, it's There's some ugliness here, guys. So, But we are going to cover each NFC division, give you our... Uh, predictions of who we think is going to be the the favorite or maybe, you know, potential upset, maybe some sleeper picks or dark horses. So we're going to go division by division, uh, kind of giving you our thoughts and our reasons of why we think someone's going to be a winner. So follow along. We're going to give you some of our picks for that. Um, we You know, if we have some best bets, we'll do some best bets at the end. Um, so stick with us. That's what we're covering today. So we'll kick it off with our traditional sweat or no sweat opener where we each give give each other a comment to kind of get the feedback. Uh, I'm going to kick it off. I'm actually going non-sports today. I'm, okay. I'm going totally like opposite it. of sports. So I like it. Uh, I'm going on a lot of trips, you know, uh, coming up in the next few weeks. I'm taking my kid to Disney. I'm going to be going to Vegas for my brother's bachelor's party. I got another trip coming up to California. I got a bunch of trips. And obviously when you go on trips, you think about food. So food and good eating is on my mind. I love pizza. And I think people who assume because I'm from the Chicago area, the Chicago, I've lived in the city, I've lived in the suburbs. They go, oh, you deep dish pizza, Chicago, right? And that's what they associate. That's kind of a an assumption that people make. But me personally, I think that the thin, large New York style pizza style is the best ultimate type of pizza slice there is. I don't think hands down, I think it hands down totally destroys deep dish pizza. So when people assume Chicagoans are all about deep dish, I see that as a once in a while kind of thing. It's nice to kind of just get rid of that craving and you want a slice of it. But in terms of like everyday best type of pizza, hands down, New York style pizza, no competition. It's the best slice ever, sweat or no sweat. Wow. No competition. No competition. Um, All right. Hands down. The, if we're, it depends on the category. If we're going with, it's a, it's a Friday night. I just want some pizza that like, you know, what, what can deliver to my house? I'm with you. But if it's like, you know, my, what pizza do I enjoy better? I like deep dish better than, than New York's wow. thin slice. Wow. I would, okay. I, yeah. Okay. I, I understand your logic where it's like, you know, it's getting deep dishes kind of like a, um, it's like a production type thing. Like you make, you make it like, you know, a, a once in whatever, once a week, once a month, once a year type type thing, you know, you make it, make it special, you make it an occasion, but I'm telling you, I, I had never had deep dish pizza before. And then maybe four years ago, I went to Chicago. I went to Lou Malinati's, one of like the typical tourist places. I mean, and I was blown away, hands down the best pizza I've ever had in my life. Oh, I, I will say though, it to, to comment, Lou Malnati's is the best. So I, I don't good. care. I, I don't care what other people say. Lou Malnati's is so good. And people say Gino's East and Pequods and Lou Malnati's, man. You are right on that. Yeah, I, I didn't go to the other the other places. I only went to Lou Malnati's. Another, I don't know if you've been there. Another place that I had in a four day trip to Chicago, I went four times every single day. Dessert place, uh, the Nutella Cafe. It's on. It's yeah. Oh my yeah. god! I mean, there's only two. <laughs> Last I checked in New York City and in Chicago, <laughs> but I'm telling you, a four-day trip in Chicago, 
it was actually a, a uh, it was an away Sixers trip, which was fun. I went with, I went with two friends. It was like a, some that Sixers podcast I listen to organizes an away trip every year. So we went to oh, Chicago. Nice. Um, but me and my friends, Nutella cafe every single day, every single day we were in Chicago and it was worth it every single time. It was incredible. Nice. Nice. All right. Let's take con. Uh, so no context. I'm saying New York style pizza is the ultimate style Sweat. of pizza. Oh, okay. you're sweating. <laughs> Okay. You're in Florida in the summer. <laughs> you're sweating. <laughs> I'm also I'm not a thin I'm not a thin slice guy. I will say I'm not a thin gotcha. slice guy. Like if, if I'm if I'm getting like if I'm going to like Domino's, I'm choosing hand tossed over thin crust. Gotcha, gotcha. So all right, what do you what do you got for me, Matt? Toss me. Um, what do you got? My, I, I I was when you first were saying that you weren't doing. I thought you were going to say you weren't doing NFL. So I was worried <laughs> that we were gonna, we were going to have the same one. I have an NBA one with the Kate with the Kevin Durant news that he's staying in Brooklyn. Uh, Nets finish top three in the East. Pretty simple. Sweat or no sweat. Oh man. Top. Okay. Top three in the East. Oh, and now. Okay. So that's, this is assuming that Kyrie's also staying because yeah, KD's staying, correct. Okay, then yes, then no sweat, no yeah. sweat at all. I'm, I'm not even hesitating. There's, there's West different story East. Yes. No sweat at all. Not I even, mean, not yeah, they're the, like, they were the one seed before Kevin Durant got hurt yeah. in like January, you know, like them and the bulls, funny enough, the bulls were like the one seed for, for the beginning of the year. Um, I think people kind of forget how, I mean, not forget. Cause like everyone knows they had the talent, but just how good they were. And then like Joe Harris got hurt. And then like, it was like the whole Kyrie thing, I think was just impossible to play with yeah. last year. Um, but they have like a good team. Like it's easy to, to clown on them, but they have a good team. Like Durant, like I, like the Ben Simmons, if he ever plays a basketball game again, Having two prolific scores is like the perfect situation for him. He doesn't need to score. Yeah. You know, he doesn't need to score. He exactly. just play. So, anyways, yeah, I think um, I, as a Sixers fan, I am definitely wor- now worried again about the Nets. I thought that they were going to be a joke trading KD and Kyrie. Now I, they're another team I have to worry about. No, exactly. I mean, I mean, look, I, I mean, you have the Celtics, right? Celtics, um, six, Bucks. Yeah, Celtics. Bucks, Sixers, they're all going to be in the mix, but with the talent on that roster and look, it's just, it was just a weird season. It, basically they were a bunch of head cases, yeah. you know, including Steve Nash, who just sucks in my opinion. <laughs> so it's like, but, but from a talent standpoint, they have the talent and they have enough role players. Honestly, it's a, it's a good team. You can make a run. You can make a legit run. If they just kind of don't get outside their heads and go insane again and just focus on basketball. Yeah. I, I could see them cracking the top three for sure. Yeah. For yeah, sure. It's a good so, team. All right, guys, we are going to get right into it. We're going to jump into the meat and potatoes, the main segment of our show, NFC divisional previews, picking NFC winners, NFC sleepers. So let's kick it off. I'm biased, obviously. Uh, I'm, I'm a Bears fan. So we're going to start off with the NFC North, a very ugly division, guys, in my opinion. Okay. I mean, we have some fun teams uh, given the, the reality series with the Lions, but it, it's going to be a messy season. So NFC North, Chicago Bears. Green Bay Packers, Detroit Lions, and the Minnesota Vikings. So I'll kick it off. Look, I'm not even going to spend long on this. Favorite to win, Green Bay Packers. Okay, uh, you have literally one of the best quarterbacks alive. So th- that by itself, I know you. It, it's a loss to lose Devonte Adams, but you got uh, you know great running backs, plural. Okay, you have Aaron Rodgers. Uh, scheme that's going to be very similar, plug and play. They made a few draft picks, you know, to maybe plug up some of the holes on the offensive side. Uh, with receivers. So I, it, it, I equate it to kind of what happens in New England. You plug and play average, hardworking, okay receivers, and Aaron Rodgers will elevate their game just like Tom Brady used to do in New England. Okay. So um, it's a pretty weak division overall, in my opinion. The Bears are a mess. Vikings are this question mark. I'm not sure what to make of them. Lions, I think they're on the, I think they're on the come up actually, but just not, it's just, they're not just ready at this point. So minus barring some injury, I I see the Packers as a clear cut favorite. I'm actually more interested in talking about my potential dark horse sleeper pick. And I am actually going to go with the Lions as that pick. So over the Vikings, over the Vikings, over the Vikings, because my my rationale is this, like, I I know the QB is, is, is not some world beater guys. Okay. But you had Gary DeAndre Goff, St- for those of you at home. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to name him. Um, <laughs> the, the Swift was injured for, for a good chunk of the season. Hawkinson was injured a good chunk of the season. Um, when I look at their schedule, I, I, I see at least 10 games where they're going to be competitive guys. Okay. Um, I, I can actually see them knocking off the bears at least one game, maybe a couple. Then, then you get some of these other bottom feeder teams 
I, I see at least 10 games where they're at least going to be in it, in my opinion. Okay. And if, if it take, it's going to take a lot of things, a lot of lucky breaks and a lot of things to go their way, other teams to have some injuries or something, but I could see them eking out if things break the right way. Maybe, maybe like maybe 10 wins. And I know that's a stretch. I know that's a stretch, but I, I see on their schedule at least six games where I, I feel like they can take. And then again, they're going to be competitive and maybe five more. Okay. Again, this is a long shot sleeper pick, but if I were going to gamble on a long shot and I wouldn't put a lot on this for a divisional winner, that would be like my dark horse sleeper pick over the Vikings. I I just, I just don't think the bears have it. I'm not even considering them. So. Yeah. Yeah. That 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 to me, I was debating between the Lions and the Vikings, and I just kind of erred on the side of uh, of the Lions. I, I really, it, it sounds crazy, but I did so. Yeah, um, from an odds perspective, Packers are favorites minus one fifty five. Vikings are second at plus two forty, and then your Lions are plus nine fifty. I so I also made the case of it not being the Packers, but I chose the Vikings. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'll get to them in a little bit. But to talk about the Lions. I'm kind of like, I think everybody is not everybody. Majority of people seem to be on, seem to be closer to your side. We're like, you know, the lions, they cover the spread in 11 of 17 games last year. They finished one in seven and one score games. And everybody remembers like the brutal losses that they had last year. Like the Ravens yeah. one was brutal. They lost last second to the Vikings on like oh, a terrible yeah. one. Yeah. Like, they had some awful losses. So like, I, I get it from that perspective, but to me, like I could see this being a year in which like they won three games last year. They'll win more games this year. I do think that they'll win more games, yeah. but I, but I don't think that they're going to win more than six. Like I would be shocked if they won seven games personally. Like I think. Okay. All right, let's go. Let's go. I have the schedule full, right in front of me. Let's go down the list. All right, let's, let's do it. Win loss. Let, let's chalk it up. Eagles loss. loss. Okay. That's okay. Commanders. I'm going to chalk it up as a win. I'm going to say win against the commanders. And I know that's going to be hard. I just, I can't stand, I, I can't stand Wentz. So I'm just, I'm literally just rooting against Wentz. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to chalk it up. So we, we'll differ. We'll do our own thing. Yeah. But I'm going to say I'll commanders get, win. I'll give that a loss. Uh, Vikings. I'm going to go loss. I'm going to yeah, go loss. I'm going okay. loss. Uh, Seahawks. I'm going to give them that. Okay. I'll give them Seahawks win. I'll give them Seattle at new England. That's a, loss. that's an L. Okay. Oh, man. At Dallas. I'm going to have to go loss. That's an L. Okay. Dolphins. Maybe this is my upset. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, cause this is, can at, give them. this is at Detroit. And I don't think I don't, I'm not a big Tua fan. So I'm going to give, I'm with you on Tua. I can give I'm, them a W green Bay loss. L bears win. Okay. It's Giants. I, I'm going to say win. Okay. okay. It's four bills. L. L Jags win. I'm going to split them with the Vikings and I'm going to give them a win. Okay. All right. I can, so I guess that is, if you give them the the jag, if you give them the Dolphins Jags splitting with the Vikings, that's at seven. Okay. Jets, oh, I don't know. That's. Pr- I mean, gonna, I guess I didn't really consider their strength of schedule. So, all right. Anyways, we can keep going. Sorry. I'm gonna just because my theory, I'm biased. I'm gonna say Jets win, and then again, Panthers win, and let's say they even split. This is the key: can they sweep the Bears versus not split the Bears? If they could sweep the Bears. They get 10 and they're going to lose to the Packers in the last game. That's where I'm coming up with 10 is yeah. I'm assuming they're going to sweep the bear. So it's again, it's long stretch because I'm giving them the dolphins. I'm, I'm giving them the Jags even, which it's controversial, but even the jets. So there's, again, there's three in there that maybe they should, I shouldn't be giving them, but again, lucky breaks. I could make a case for 10. That's why I'm going with them as a sleeper. Yeah. I'm, my only ar- argument there would be like, you're basically every 50, 50 game. You're, you're basically giving them, you know what I mean? Yes. Like just, yes. You like <laughs> if they can possibly win, but um, I don't know, like Jared Goff, I just can't get, I can't get behind. They like had the fifth worst defense in the NFL last year, according to DVOA. And like, they, yeah, they, they, they drafted Aiden Hutchinson, but like, is that getting you from 25th to even like 20th? You know what I mean? Probably not. And like, I still like, People love Dan Campbell because he's like the ultimate football guy, but we, we have sim- we simply have zero evidence he's actually a good coach. Like I, I I believe he can rally the troops and he can chug hundred ounces of coffee a day, a double espresso shot coffee, but we have no evidence that he can like out scheme an opponent or like you know like 
make a good, like go for it on fourth down. Like he's such a football guy. He's like, no, we punt. We don't like, we're not aggressive on fourth down. Like stuff like that. I just think we've fallen in love with him just because he's like, again, the ultimate football guy. But like, again, we, we just simply don't have any evidence that he can actually coach a team besides his rally the troops. So anyways, absolutely correct. Yeah. A lot of, yeah, of times correct. Spent. Spent on the lines. So I'll make my Vikings, my Vikings point quick. To be clear, sure. I'm picking the Packers. Gotcha. If I had to pick another team, I would pick the Vikings over the Lions. Um, so if I were to make a Vikings case, so last year they finished eight and nine, 14 one score games last year. They played in 14 one score games, which is just obscene. They went six and eight. Yeah. So it's not like they went, you know, one and seven like the Lions did, but they went yeah. six and eight in one score games. Um, and to me, like it was the Zimmer defense is what let the Vikings down the past two years, not the offense. Um, Zimmer's gone. And I think we talk about the likability factor going from Wentz to Matt Ryan. I think we really can't put a gauge on the likability factor of getting rid of Mike Zimmer. Like he yeah. wasn't, you know, as bad as Urban Meyer, but that team hated, like they were done. They were so ready to get, to get, just get away from Mike Zimmer. Kirk, who I love to roast past two years, 4,200 passing yards, 30 plus touchdowns in the past two years. Like that's not bad. Um, and I think we're kind of not giving Devontae Adams enough credit. Like we're just basically being like, well, Aaron Rodgers will figure it out. Um, yeah. and you use the, the Tom Brady example. Well, like Tom Brady's last two years in new England, that offense was like average, you know, he had bad receivers. He had, an, he had a decent offensive line, but like that, that offense struggled because of the weapons. Yeah. So to me, like this Packers team, I do love their running backs. Their offensive line could be good, but it just depends on the health because both their tackles came into camp hurt and are nursing injuries and ba- yeah. Bakhtiari and Bakhtiari and yeah. Elton Jenkins is the other one. Um, so to me, like this Packers team could be as gross as like, if you remember back in the 2015 year when Jordy Nelson tore his ACL, when the Packers like well, had a horrible stretch to end the year because they just couldn't get it. Like their receivers couldn't do anything. Like to me, that is in the realm of possibilities. Um, like Sammy Watkins, I'm not putting any faith in Alan Lazard has been like, He's never done it before. He could be good, but he's never done yeah. it before. And, and Aaron Rodgers hates right. rookie receivers. He's like on record this year saying that he's like, doesn't like rookie receivers. They just, they can't think the way he does. So, I mean, I get it. The Packers are 10 and 0 without Devontae Adams since he's been drafted. So like the history is that they've been, that they've been successful, but we've never seen it over the course of a full year. So um, like, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Like I like the Vikings over win total. I'm, I'm higher on them than I think the rest of the public because like, I like what their uh, head coach, Kevin O'Connell, I think is the guy's name. I'm, I could be butchering that. Um, like, I think he's a good, a good coach. Got like good offensive schemes. They like have a really good supporting cast around Kirk and Jefferson and Dalvin cook. So I wouldn't be surprised if like the Vikings won 10 games this year and then maybe won like a tiebreaker over the Packers, something like that. Sure. All right. So let's move on. Uh, let's move on now to NFC East. So we got Cowboys, Eagles, Giants, Commanders. You kick this one off. Who's your favorite and any kind of dark horse or sleepers here? Yeah, to me, I think this is probably the most interesting, uh, maybe the NFC West, but the e- NFC East, I think is, you can make the argument for all four teams. Like I would, like, I wouldn't be shocked. Like the commanders mm-hmm. won two years ago and they won seven games. You know what I mean? Like could, could Brian Dable just be a good coach and get the giants to nine wins and the rest of the teams struggle. Like to me, that's not out of the realm of possibility. Um, I like the Cowboys are the favorite favorites at plus plus one thirty five which I think they should be. They have the best quarterback in the division. They have the best talent on defense in a division in uh, Micah Parsons. And, um, and they're just like, they probably have the best roster, but a, they have the anchor of Mike McCarthy head coach holding them back. I think is, is legitimate. I, I don't think he's a good head coach. Sure. And, you know, I was surprised like doing research, the Cowboys finished last year, number one in, in DVO or yeah. Number one in DVOA in the entire NFL. And they finished number two on defense. But that defense, I find hard to replicate year over year. I think we mentioned it in a previous episode, but they had the most defensive touchdowns in the NFL with five. The next closest team had three. That's like rarely a stat you see sticky year over year. It's like it it just doesn't happen one year. doesn't happen the next. Same thing with turnovers. They are sorry, takeaways. They led the NFL in takeaways. And that's another stat that like some defenses are better than others, but they're not going to lead the league in both of those categories again. Now on offense, they lost Amari Cooper. Michael Gallup is Cedric Wilson. Yeah. Michael Gallup is hurt. Cedric Wilson is out. Although Gallup, they just removed from the PUP. So he might not miss as much time as initially yeah. thought, 
but like Zeke's another year older, the offensive line's another year older. Yeah. And really that like once vaulted weapons that they had on offense, it's just CD lamb and Dalton Schultz at this point. Um, yeah. And on defense, the, la- the last point I'll make about the Cowboys on defense, like they're kind of reminding me of the Rams where like one injury will tank could possibly tank their season. Yeah. Diggs goes down. Parsons goes down. They're, they're, they're toast. And I think like the Eagles are incredibly deep at a lot of positions. The only really position they're not is like secondary, which like no one has a deep secondary. Sure. Um, so that's my Cowboys point. I think you'll probably make the argument for the Eagles. So um, I'll, I'll make, I'll make my, uh, point on the Eagles short. Uh, everyone knows I'm not a Hurts guy, but like they're surrounding him with the number one O line in the NFL, according to PFF, the number four set of receivers, according to PFF. But like Hurts ranked 21st in accuracy last year. Uh, this is according to like an advanced stat on pro football uh, focus, where they look at like bad throw percentage and like on target percentage. He was 21st. And I also think their defensive coordinator is is not, I don't think he's a good defensive coordinator. Like he plays this like off coverage, like by like 10 yards and he just gifts the team's easy five yard completions. The Eagles set a record last year with six quarterbacks that went over or five quarterbacks that went over 80% completion percentage percentage. That's the most in NFL history. No other team has done that more than twice. So like, I think if they're going to play that stupid vanilla defense, then they're just going to get toasted again. Um, so like the Eagles are plus 170, so it's not like they're like a huge dark horse or anything. And sure. I get the argument for them. Uh, but to me, I still think it's the Cowboys division. I'll, I'll take the best quarterback, I'll take the best yeah. um talent on defense, and that'll win out more often than not. Yeah. No, and I'll, I'll be brief. I, I mean, I've, I've talked enough about the Eagles in, in two prior episodes. I'm not going to belabor it. Um, and ultimately, it's like if you could take Dak Prescott and you put him on the Eagles, then you oh, have the, a Super Bowl. Then you have a Super Bowl winner. One hundred percent. Yeah. In my 100%. Opinion, right. So that's that's the problem with with Hertz, in my opinion. Right. So. So look, I, I I kept going back and forth, Laughlin, because in my opinion, it's a two team race. Uh, unless some shit storm happens, it, it's going to be the Cowboys or it's going to be the Eagles. Um, Cowboys because of top heavy talent, or Eagles because of strength of schedule and depth of their team. And and I'm being specific because I agree with you. I, I, I mean, it, it's the QB concerns that make me. It's it's hard for me to be all in on them. So. I'm still going to lean Eagles, and the only reason is because basically of all the things you said, uh, I, I think I'm concerned that with some of the departures on the offensive side for the Cowboys, that we're going to see a drop in offensive DVOA, and we're going to see them not be in, the, in those top tier positions, maybe drop off to, I don't even know, I, I think maybe 12 to 15, somewhere in that side, be kind of a average, slightly above average offense. I'm worried about that, and I'm, I am worried about the depth um, that you brought up that it's like you said, it's star caliber, but top heavy. So you, you have one injury to whatever digs, you have one injury to Parsons. I think there's going to be a huge drop off potentially on either side of the ball. You, you, you get an injury to Schultz, whatever it's, it's, it's the depth issue that concerns me. And we know that injuries are going to happen. That's just part of the NFL season. It's nor it's the norm, unfortunately, yeah. sadly, yeah. Um, that I think because of the depth and because of the strength of schedule, I'm still going to lean Eagles. Honestly, I'm not going to force a sleeper pick. I don't I don't really see a sleeper, honestly, or like some surprise. The only case I can make, and this is crazy because I've been hating on him so much. Maybe, maybe the commanders, uh, uh, as if weird I, as that sounds, okay? Like, if they I have had, some solid pieces. Okay? Yeah. If I had to choose between them and the Giants, I would take the commanders. Like, yeah. like I don't know. Like, last year, I thought they were going to have the best defense in the NFL. I I was like very confident in that. And I don't know, like they had the same coaching staff, the same talent and their DVOA went from third best in 2020 with the same team was like 26 or 27th last year. There was like no rhyme or reason why their defense was so bad. And like now Chase Young's hurt. He's out at least the first four games. But like, if we're just looking at a talent perspective, that's a good defense. Like they have a ton of talent along the defensive line. Um, their secondary is like, is decent with Fuller and with William Jackson. Yep. Like I, I love McLaurin. I think he's an absolute stud. Yep. I don't know what's going on yep. with Gibson. There's like a lot of weirdness with Antonio Gibson, but like, they're like skill positions are horrible, but, um, I just like Ron Rivera is, I think I mean, he's not a bad head coach, but like, he's not giving you anything, anything special. Wentz is certainly not giving you anything special. So I'm with you. It, it's hard. Like I wouldn't be shocked again. Like the, the football team won the division two years ago with seven wins. You know what I mean? Like it's not the yeah crazier and, things that happened. And, and as much as I rag on him, it's like if you get that version of Wentz, right? That you had kind of in the middle of that season, right? Just kind of that you know average, serviceable, don't do anything stupid and crazy Wentz. 
and you rely on the other strengths of the team. I, I could see like just a, an average middling team winning the games they're supposed to win. Yeah, right? and just, that's what I'm saying. That's the pro- that's the yeah. only way I see that. It's just not hit Wentz's ML. That's the problem. He has he has to play hero ball. That's the hero problem. ball. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm not. Just, yeah, I'm not predicting it. But again, like even if the Giants won, crazier crazier things have happened. There you go. All right, guys. So let's let's move on to the NFC West. We got the Cardinals. We got the Rams. We got the 49ers. We got the Seahawks. I'll I'll kick this one off. Um, God, I mean, this is tough. I I, I mean, again, I, I think. I know some people are high on the card. I'm not very high on the cards, honestly. I don't know why people are. Um, that's just my I'm, honest opinion. I'm okay. with you there. I'm with you there. It, to me, it's just kind of, again, I'm just sitting here debating between the Rams and the 49ers. And still, it's it's almost a very similar debate, like a, a very top-heavy Rams team. I'm just going to lean Niners, honestly. And, and that's a gamble. Because, uh, again, I know there's a lot of hype and excitement about Trey Lance. I'm, I'm excited about him as well. But it, it, we have to admit, it, it's really this huge unknown, right? This, this could either work out, and we're going to praise... Trey Lance and we're going to praise Shanahan for unlocking or could just, it could be a cluster F on offense. I just don't know. So I'm, I'm just literally going to take a gamble and say that he's going to live up to some of the potential and they're solid everywhere else. And I know this is a very simplistic summary that just looking at the two teams, the hunger factor, is there going to be this kind of lull after a Super Bowl win? I looked at the strength of schedule. I mapped out the different wins. I, I I can easily see the 49ers going 11 and six, maybe even 12 and five that I I'm just going to make them barely edge out the Rams as my favorite. I, I'm not even going to bother with the sleeper pick here, guys. It's going to be the 49ers or the Rams. I just, I don't see the cards doing it. I don't have much faith in that team and the coach um, for reasons that we talked about. I don't see the Seahawks doing it. It's, it's 49ers Rams and you could flip and flop those two all you want. Yeah, I totally agree. I've talked a lot about how I'm down on the Cardinals. We don't need to get into it, but like not a cliff guy last three years ended two and seven, two and five, one and five. Nope. Weirdness with Kyler. I'm out on the Cardinals. I give them 0% chance. Yeah. No so D hop early on either. Right. Exactly. No exactly. exactly. Um, Seahawks, not even, I give them less of a 0% chance if that's even possible. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not um, even a so, conversation there. So I'm, I'm with you. Two team race, which is like the whole the whole NFC is just two team races. <laughs> um, it's pretty gross. Yeah, it isn't like you wish one of the good teams in the AFC could just move over to the NFC. You yeah. just just. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm with you. The Forty Nine ers have like a wild range of outcomes. Uh, like if Trey Lance has a um, Lamar Jackson 2018 MVP year, I would not yep. be shocked if yep. he has. Um, uh, I don't know, a uh, Carson Wentz year where he's like inconsistent and, and, and not good. I wouldn't be shocked. So the, the range of outcomes is wide, but yep. like offensively, I just have enough faith in Shanahan. Like he traded two first round picks. He traded up for Trey Lance be, just because of the talent that he had and the, 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 what his running ability will do to open up the offense, I think is legit. Um, obviously a huge risk. He's like historically raw as a prospect when you consider how many passes he's thrown and in, in going back to his like freshman year of college. Yeah. So I, exactly. so I get it. There's a, there's a huge risk there. Um, but I love the 49ers defense. I think D'Amico Ryans is their defensive coordinator. I think is awesome. Uh, they finished last year seventh in DVOA on defense. And that was with, if you remember their entire secondary, they had like a Ravens injury issue in their secondary. They did. Everybody they did. was hurt and they still finished seventh. And we all remember what they did to the Packers in the playoffs, like the amazing coaching job that D'Amico Ryans did. So I wouldn't be surprised if they had a top five, top three defense. Like they have the talent, they have the coaching. It just seems like they're almost like the chargers of the NFC where like every year, it seems like they have terrible injuries. It's like a yearly tradition with the 49ers, but if they can stay healthy, if Lance can, I mean, he doesn't need to be Lamar Jackson, 2018. Sure. You know what I mean? Like he just has to be, um, he can be inconsistent as long as there's more good than bad is how I would describe it. Like you're, they're going to be growing pains with the quarterback that raw. Um, and everything you said with the Rams, it's like, it's really just Super Bowl hangover or injury. One of those two things, if that happens, then I could see the them winning like nine games as opposed to 11. And I could see the 49ers winning 10 plus. So I'm with you. I, this is boring because we're, we're agreeing a lot, but I chose the 49ers yeah. as well. No. And I, I like the way you put it in simplistic terms, guys, like I, it, it Almost like a, it's not it's not the best term, but like a safer pick is like the floor is going to be higher in my opinion with the Rams. Like you kind of know you know what you're getting, right? 
And it's like, and I totally agree with the way the way Matt put it. It's just you can there can be so many different ranges of outcomes with the 49ers. It's like Super Bowl winner, or yeah. it's year one and we need more progression with Trey Lance, right? And it just it's hard to predict. So that if if you're looking for kind of the higher floor, it's probably the Rams, but I think there could be more upside you know, to the 49ers slightly, in my opinion, just, yeah. just like Matt was saying. So I, I, I agree. I mean, like Sean McVay plus Matthew Stafford, like that's going to lead to wins. It's just, it just is what it is. It's just, exactly. do they have bad luck and get nine or, you know, yeah. like I said, do they get 11? But in terms of odds, unsurprisingly Rams favored plus 125, 49ers second plus 175. So if like, if, if you're like us and you think this is a two team race, just put money on both the Rams and the 49ers. And if one of them wins, you'll be profitable. Same you, you can do go. the same thing with the uh, NFC East with the Eagles and the Cowboys. It's just like, Hey, one of these teams are going to win. I'm going to put half a unit on every team, no matter who wins, we profit. Easy yeah. way to, easy way to make a, make some money in the, if, if you are in line with us and you think that it's a two team, two team race. That's not a bad idea. I think I might have to do that, man. So there you go. <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right, guys. And now we are going to wrap it up with the NFC South. So, Matt, you kick it off for us. We have the Bucks, the Saints, the Panthers, the Falcons. Ugh, the Falcons. Um, so who who are you taking as a clear-cut fave and, and maybe some kind of dark horse or sleeper pick if you have any? Yeah. I mean, I don't have much here. Bucks are at minus 270 for a reason. Yeah. Brady, Brady stay healthy. He returned to the team from uh, the masked singer, allegedly. Yeah. Um, they're minus 270. The next best team is Saints plus 300. It's the biggest divisional favorite in the entire NFL, I think, for a reason. The other three teams, I think, stink. I wouldn't be surprised if all three of them finish in the top 10 of the NFL draft. I, I would not be surprised. So, no, I don't, I don't have much to add here. I'm taking the Bucks, and I, yeah, I don't have much to add. Uh, I mean, as boring as we are, guys, I, I, I'm going to keep it simple. Is it, it, just like Matt, if if Brady's healthy, it's going to be the Bucks. Okay, their roster they they have the talent in the NFC South. If Brady gets hurt, then the Saints. That's a, yeah. That's, the that's Saints my, win that, six games that, and win the division. That, that's my summary, guys, because it's not going to be the Panthers and it's not going to be the Falcons. So I, I know that's so simplistic, but it's if there's some kind of health concern. Then I'm going to roll with the Saints. That's that's it, though. I, I, I beyond that, there's really not much more to say. So I, I think, as basic as that analysis is, I think we're both content with that being an accurate depiction of the NFC South. Honestly, yeah, so. I don't. I mean, it, it was like the same thing. Uh, what was the AFC one? That was like a one team race. We like it was the, the Bills, right? Like, there's not much to add. Like, it's going to be this team's yeah. going to win. Exactly. Exactly. We're not going to force the issue, guys. So yeah. Um, okay, guys. So thanks for sticking with us through our NFC breakdown of each division. I know that last one was very brief, but it is what it <laughs> is, guys. We're not going to try to pretend and force some sleeper. That's not going to happen, right? So um, so look, um, we always like to try to wrap things up with a few bets. So um, you know, I'm I'm gonna mix it up a little bit. I'm gonna give you guys a couple of thoughts on on UFC. Um and uh, a couple, a degenerate NFL parlay. So I'll, I'll, let me start off with UFC. And if you want a more in-depth breakdown about what I'm about to say, uh, this is coming up for UFC 280. Big pay-per-view event, guys. It's a stacked card. If there was ever a time to shell out 80 bucks, this would be the one for a pay-per-view event. So the main event, obviously, is Charles Oliveira versus Islam Mahachev. Um you know, a lot of people are very high on Islam. Uh, he is the, you know, kind of pupil training partner to Khabib, um, who is one of the greatest, um, you know, champions. Um, so look, I, I can, I think this is going to be a tough fight. I, I can make a case for either fighter. Okay. So, you know, Charles Oliveira, you know, he has, he is at the peak of his career. He is he has been fighting the best of the best. He's beat Justin Gaethje. He's been beaten Dustin Poirier. He's beaten Michael Chandler. Um, he has been willing to bang. He's been almost knocked out in almost all of those recent fights and found a way to come back. So displaying good chin and resiliency and then coming to win in, in dominant fashion later in these fights. He's got 21 submission wins. So look, I think Charles Oliveira, has the slight edge in experience. And I do think that counts. I don't think it's totally meaningless. Um, I think he has the advantage in the striking against Mahachev. Okay. Um, he has a three and a half inch reach, which I think helps to kind of defend from takedowns. 
Um, and obviously his submission game is elite and he's going to have the admission, the advantage in submissions. And I'm being very particular. I didn't say on the ground. I said submissions because when it comes to the ground game, we know that Mahachev with his wrestling takedowns and dominant top position, he is a dominant force there, guys. So it's really going to be the X factor of I'm, I know that at some point Islam is going to take him down and can Oliveira find a way to either be dangerous and pull off a sub from his back or find a way to get back up. And, and that's going to determine who's going to win this fight, in my opinion. So right now, Islam is a clear-cut fave. I don't think the odds should be that lopsided, even though I can make a case for both people. So I do think legitimately, not just for value, I can see Oliveira having multiple paths to victory. And because of the value, um, I think the odds have already shifted even more today. It was like plus 150 right now. It's plus 140. I still think there's value there. I don't know if I would take it any lower than like plus 130 because I do think that's somewhere closer to an appropriate line, but I, I, I still would take them at plus 140. So that's one of my value bets for UFC's huge pay-per-view at UFC 280. I am going to roll with the value and I'm going to hope that Charles Dubronx Oliveira will give me a nice plus money win against Islam. So that's one of my there you go. Plays. I like it. Um, I so I have I have some WMEA ones, but they will already have been played by the time this is posted. So I'm just going to assume I went undefeated with my WMEA <laughs> bets. Really good job there, Matt. Nice job. Um, but I, I do have <clears throat> so I've locked in three uh, sp- spread bets specifically for NFL Week One that I'm curious gotcha. about, about your thoughts on. There, okay. uh, okay. positive. <clears throat> sorry, positive EV on the Action page. Number one. I think this is probably the hottest take of all of them. Raiders plus four against the Chargers in week one. Oh, oh. Um, I'm on record being high on the Raiders. The Chargers already had JC Jackson go down with the ankle cleanup surgery. Apparently only supposed to be out two to four weeks. But to me, that just what, what I hear is it's happening again. The Chargers, the most like always snake bitten. Something always happens. Yeah. And I, I mean, I like this Raiders team. So that's probably the most controversial of the three sure. I have. Raiders plus four, but, mm-hmm. um, but like chargers win by a field goal and I, and I win this in the bet pits, you know what I mean? So, yeah. And I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if the Raiders won straight up. Look, my, my initial gut reaction without even looking at it is, you know, I, I, I think because the, the key number, right. I mean, you got it at plus four and if it's also positive EV, I, I take it. I think there's value there for sure. I, I and look, I, I think both of us are very high on the chargers, but um, but like I said, for those key factors and Derek Carr is no slouch. Okay. So, um, I, I could see it happening and, and you get the cushion of not even doing the money line. You get a spread above a key number and you get positive EV. I, I think that's a smart bet. I take the value on that. So I, I, I wouldn't disagree. Actually. I don't think that's crazy, honestly. So nice. Well, this next one, I know you'll agree with Jaguars plus four against the commanders. I mean, <laughs> come on, you're telling me whence the least headstrong quarterback in the entire NFL is going to is going to, I don't, I think this is in Washington, but still is going to oh, play the same God. team. He absolutely crapped his pants in against the Colts, which led to him being traded in his first game back. You think he's not going to try and play Superman in oh, his first game God. back again, Jaguars lose by three. This bet hits. Yeah. 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 Look, honestly, and again, I know people, it's it's funny because there's so many people high on Tua, um, and I just find that weird. And I know people find me, I'm actually pretty high on T-Law this year, next year. So, uh, you know, with him, with what ETN, right? He's on track to play, right? Yeah. Was, yeah. yeah. So with him, ETN, you know, new co- I, I actually am kind of high on them. I'm not expecting them to win or like the division. I'm just saying, I, I I think they have potential to kind of put things together this year. And that would be a great litmus test right out the gate versus a team. That's not the bills or not the yeah. 49ers is this is a good litmus test. So I am going to have faith in T law and a new coach and a new system. I say, yes, let's ride that. I'll, I'll, I'll actually go with you on that. I'm going to ride that with you. Yeah. I mean, Dougie P it's first game in Jacksonville. Doug- I love Dougie P and T law, man. Yeah. I, it's, it's gonna me, happen. I, I like the combo. I'm excited yeah. for the Jags. Actually. I, I am. I really am. Okay. Um, okay. Last one. Broncos minus four and a half against Seattle. I mean, I don't think there's much to add here. I think Seattle is going to be a joke unless they trade for Jimmy G, which doesn't look like they will a team starting drew lock or, um, Geno Smith with the worst ranked offensive line, according to PFF in the entire NFL with a bad defense that hasn't been good since, I don't know, the last five years. 
Give me I'm the Broncos looking, minus four and I'm a half. I'm looking right now. Broncos four and a half. That's what it's at? Or it's moved a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I locked it in on Monday or yesterday. Yeah, I locked this in yesterday. So the odds might have changed. Yeah, minus five and a half now. It's already shifted. That is smart. Mine, wow. I'll, I'll take them at minus. It's, that's it? Why? I would take them anything below a touchdown. I would take them at is what kind of is where I'm at. Why? Why is that? Why is it? Why isn't it higher than that? That's to me, that's crazy. Is that that's five and a half? It's at five and a half now. Yeah. Yeah. It's at five still, and a half now. I would still I, take I, it at, at five and a half. Looks like you can I'll take get, it. You can get it on. I don't know if, if it, this is legal where you are, not legal, but if this, if this book operates where you are, points bet, you can get them at five and Fox bet, you can get them at minus five. Gotcha. I don't gotcha. know if you can use either of those two. But yeah. I got points bet. I got points bet. Okay. No, that is still, to me, that is still plus EV. I, I'd say that's a no, no brainer. I'll take that. I'll take that. For sure. I'm doing it right now as we speak. So there we go. I love on, it. On on video. Why wouldn't I? Why why is it why what am I missing? Why is it why is it that low under a touchdown? You know, Randall, who I have a lot of respect for, is on the Seahawks. And I just he, he so his betting strategy is to just fade whatever people are gonna do. He's like basically like I'm just gonna take the opposite of the public every single time. And I will like more often than not, it probably does work, but I I cannot get behind it in this uh, in not this in specific this, instance. This is in this spot, I don't know about that in this spot. I yeah I, He's I also, find that hard. You don't think Russ against his former team is gonna be <laughs> yeah I, I don't know man. I Russ I do put in the category of a headstrong quarterback that will show out against his form again. I mean that's Jacksonville's not Wentz's former team, but we know, you know what I mean. The revenge narrative is there. Exactly. Okay. Okay. What else, you guys? Is that it? Anything else you got for us? That's it. Those are those are the those are the three that I that I locked in. Okay, I got a couple for NFL. So we're we're moving away from from UFC here. I I'm gonna take. Um, I have locked in already, uh, and I'm fi- this is gonna be bad juju, but I'm taking the 49ers minus six and a half. And again, you know very. Uh, high variable variability of what's going to happen with Trey Lance, but I just I don't see enough talent and depth for them to keep up with the 49ers in four quarters. I'm I'm taking the 49ers minus six and a half, you know, uh under the key under a number of seven. Um I, I just I'm gonna take the spread on them. I know it's at Chicago, but I don't care. I just I don't have faith in my bear. So that's a, that's one spread bet I'm taking. Um I am taking Chiefs minus three. Um, versus the Cardinals in week one. So I'm going to take that. Yeah, I, I got it. I, what, what is it now? Let me check right now. And that, it moved to three and a half. I caught it at three. I would still take it. At, I mean, I love that. I love getting the field goal, but like, yeah. why are the Cardinals? I mean, I guess the Cardinals start hot. So maybe the Cardinals, we fade them later in the year. Yeah, yeah. no, you're right. I mean, that's the, that's the narrative, right? Kingsbury comes out hot in the beginning and then he's a total cluster F later in the back yeah. half of the season. So maybe, but... I still, I just think without D Hop, that's that's kind of hard then to keep up offensively with the Chiefs. So, um, I, I am gonna I am gonna take the Chiefs minus three there. And then my last one, I just posted this on Twitter. And again, guys, this one is not smart, but <laughs> I do a lot of things that are not smart. Okay, so I'm gonna. I hope you guys have your pens. Or are you gonna replay this segment uh, a couple times? A ten leg, two week, week one, week two combined parlay. I'm just gonna rattle it off, guys, real quick. Got the Colts beating the Texans. Ah, uh, that one I'm a little iffy because I, I think Davis Mills all right, but I'm going to take the Colts. They're solid. Colts uh, money line, Eagles to beat the Lions money line, Bengals to beat the Steelers, Ravens to beat the Jets, Chiefs to beat the Cards, Titans to beat the Giants, Broncos to beat the Seahawks, 49ers in the next week to beat the Seahawks. Everyone's going to beat the Seahawks. Green Bay to beat the Bears in the second week, and then Bills to beat the Titans plus. 2,111, 4750 to return a thousand dollars, and I am gonna win it. I know it. I already that foresee is, that will that, hit. That will hit. That, we will replay this on all of the <laughs> social media platforms, and it'll be it'll be great. That's that's gonna be my first degenerate money line parlay to kick off the early part of the NFL. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I mean, you all you gotta do is just hit one and you're and you're sitting pretty. Exactly, guys. Exactly. So, or I'm going to be down forty seven fifty, but whatever. It's it's a fun way to kick off the season. So, uh, anyways, anything else? Any other bets, Matt? Before I wrap things up for this episode? No, no bets, no bets. I just one week closer to the NFL season. I can't wait. 
Very nice. So thank you guys for joining in. Ho- hope you liked our, our breakdown of the AFC, this ugly NFC. <laughs> Not going to be pretty to watch for the most part, minus a few teams. Uh, but we appreciate you guys. And thank you again for checking out our, our new kind of standalone channel of the Sweat the Bet YouTube channel um, and listening in on this podcast. So please, please, we appreciate it so much, guys. Uh, please, you know, like our channel follow us, turn on your notifications. We've streamlined things. This is all kind of Matt and I here, just kind of streamlining, doing more sweat the bet related stuff. You've already seen, we're doing educational videos for new betters. Um, we're doing our traditional one week, um, you know, podcast style episodes like this. And during the NFL season, guys, we're going to be popping in, doing some live streams, just talking bets only like Sunday mornings before important primetime, like Monday night games. So we're going to be doing kind of impromptu live streams, rattling off degenerate parlays like this, some SGP, some of our positive E, smarter type of bets for those who want to stick with you know, a better strategy. But we're going to mix it up to, to have something for everybody. So please follow us for that reason. If you want to have bets fired off Sunday mornings, Monday evenings, you want to follow us during the during the NFL season, guys. Yeah. The only thing I'll add is uh, if you have any mailback questions that you want us to answer, hit us up, sweat the bet oj at gmail.com um sports non-sports related anything just cool hearing from the uh from the people asking questions so if you have anything you want us to answer just hit us up in the gmail yep and that stands for odds jam the oj not oj simpson so. <laughs> or orange juice <laughs> <laughs> all right guys thanks for tuning in and we'll catch you again in the next episode all right thanks guys